On August 6, 1945, in an effort to end World War II, the United States detonated a nuclear weapon over Hiroshima, Japan. Three days later, on August 9, a second bomb was dropped over Nagasaki. Four years later, on August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union tested their first nuclear device and the Cold War began. Nuclear war was now a credible threat, and little was known about the effects of nuclear weapons on people. The United States government became concerned about the detrimental consequences of nuclear war on both military personnel and civilians. As a result, the government embarked on a series of programs of secret experimentation using human subjects. Many of these subjects belonged to classes of people without a political voice. The poor, children, convicted felons, and the mentally handicapped. These subjects were not fully aware of the experiments being performed on them and did not give their informed consent to be part of the research. Once these experiments were revealed to the public in the 1990s, the government put into place new wide-ranging regulations to protect human research subjects in all future experiments. Oak Ridge, Tennessee was the location of one of the Manhattan Project's early industrial sites constructed to produce materials used for atomic weapons. It was here in Oak Ridge that uninformed test subjects were injected with plutonium. One of these was Eb Cade, a 55-year-old concrete worker at the facility in the first test subject at Oak Ridge. Following an automobile accident, leaving him with multiple fractures in his arms and legs, he was injected with plutonium before he was treated for his injuries 20 days later. The attending physician characterized Mr. Cade as a well-developed, well-nourished, colored male, and thus deemed him fit for plutonium injection. Samples of his healing bones and 15 of his teeth were removed and sent to Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico for analysis to determine the amount of plutonium present. Mr. Cade was not informed of the experimental procedure and later died of heart failure following his injection at Oak Ridge. The Atomic Energy Commission approved a series of experiments by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in which mentally disabled boys at the Fernald State School, formerly known as the Massachusetts School for the Feeble-Minded, were fed radioactive laced oatmeal and milk. We got to eat away from the other boys. We would get next to oatmeal, get next to milk. The oatmeal contained radioactive iron, while the milk contained radioactive calcium. The boys were tested to determine the absorption of the ingested materials into the blood. The Science Club, a fictitious organization at the school, offered free breakfast and gifts to prompt participation in the program. The club members were unknowingly fed the radioactive iron and calcium in their oatmeal. The researchers associated with this study failed to inform the parents or the children of the experiments, which later led to class action lawsuits. Also in the 1940s, Hundreds of pregnant women volunteered to participate in a nutrition study at Vanderbilt University's hospital. In this experiment, they were fed radioactive iron without their knowledge to track its absorption by measuring iron levels in their blood and urine. These women were not informed of the material they were ingesting or the risks to themselves and their unborn children. Class action lawsuits were filed by the research subjects and the courts ruled in favor of the women. These tragic experiments, which were cloaked in secrecy, all had in common the lack of informed consent of the subjects, the failure to fully weigh risks, and the use of disadvantaged or easily available subject populations. Eileen Wilson, a local reporter for the Albuquerque Tribune, was examining declassified government records on radioactive waste dumps at Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque, New Mexico, when she stumbled upon a footnote about plutonium experiments on humans. And my eye fell on a footnote, and the footnote mentioned something about 18 humans who had been injected with plutonium. For five years, she researched the story, and in 1993, released a series of three articles that described the identities of five victims, discussions with their survivors, and stories of how their lives changed after being injected with plutonium. 
Her story was entitled The Plutonium Files, in which she revealed the government's long-term use of disadvantaged human populations in testing the effects of radiation. Her story opened the eyes of many and led to a new awareness of the experiments. For these articles, she received numerous awards, including the Pulitzer Prize for National Reporting. This news reached the offices of Hazel O'Leary, the Secretary of Energy, and President Bill Clinton. A Presidential Advisory Committee, formed in 1993 to investigate these matters, issued its report in January 1994 calling for reforms and the protection of human research subjects. The next month, President Clinton issued an executive order requiring all government-funded human experiments to be performed in accordance with existing regulations. This was necessary because the laws had not been followed, likely due to the veil of secrecy surrounding the research. Title 45, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 46, also known as the Common Rule, was issued by the United States Department of Health, Education, and Welfare in 1991. This law dictates how human subjects' research must be conducted. It is based largely on the principles spelled out in the Belmont Report, which was issued by the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research in 1979. The Belmont Report is based upon three principles. First, there must be respect for persons. This means that the prospective research subject must be informed about the research and must demonstrate comprehension before giving informed consent. The subject must be made aware that participation in the study is voluntary and that he or she may quit the research project at any time. Second, there must be beneficence, meaning benefits to the subject should be maximized and harm minimized. Finally, there must be justice. This means there is equitable selection of research subjects. Subjects should not be used just because they are available, like prisoners or institutionalized people. The common rule requires that research involving human subjects be reviewed by an institutional review board, or IRB. The IRB is an independent body made up of scientists, non-scientists, and some community members independent of the research project. This panel reviews the research protocol to determine if the principles of the Belmont Report have been adequately implemented. By 2000, responsibility for protecting human research subjects was centralized in the Department of Health and Human Services and its Office for Human Research Protections. For government-funded research involving human subjects, this office is responsible for educating those involved in designing and carrying out the research performing oversight to ensure compliance by researchers to the common rule, and for administering the processes for obtaining an IRB review and approval for the research. All government-funded research performed today must meet a strict set of requirements that ensure that human subjects provide informed consent for their part in the research, that the design of the research has been reviewed and approved by an IRB, and that individuals are held accountable for the research they perform. So they have this big, high-minded uh, set of commitments and a view that basically uh, blinded them to the moral implications of what they were doing. The purpose of research is not to take care of a particular person and make that person better. The, pur the purpose of it is to create generalizable knowledge that does a lot of the preliminary work before a research study would go to this committee of volunteers to be reviewed. You know, there's just a lot more awareness and, and understanding um, and a lot more transparency than there used to be. It takes a long time before can regain public trust, which is so critical to the functioning of democracy.